Oh, thank you very much. And uh, good morning, all the participants. Firstly, let me thank the Africa Center for Strategic Studies for according me this opportunity to participate in this important uh, discussion. Before I proceed further, I would like to state that um, I would dwell mostly on the process just to enhance some of the things that uh, Dr. Amebo has already discussed, looking at our practical experience at Zambia. I will not delve so much into the content of our national security strategy, specifically because, yes, it has been approved by cabinet, it has been completed, but it has not been launched. And there's a process that the government uses to have this information out to the public, and I'm not the correct person to do that. So I hope that is understood. So uh, that said, I'll start with the issue of um, the process. Dr. Mebo emphasized on the five P's process. If the process is wrong, definitely you do, not, you do not expect to have a good product. In our situation, I think the process was uh, paid a lot of attention to in the sense that uh, as scholars of uh, strategy, national security strategy, we know there are two ways that can be used to start the process of the NSS. That is through the executive or indeed parliament identifying the need for the NSS to be drafted. We were lucky as a country that 60 years after independence, the president through executive action initiated the process that in his own signpost so that political will for the drafting, completion, and execution of the national security strategy. After that executive action, a drafting committee was put in place, which is uh, inclusive of various stakeholders. We went through a process after that of identifying stakeholders across the spectrum countrywide to ensure that there's representation from every sector of this country that will ensure ownership of the national security strategy. The stakeholder mapping that was done for us included government, line ministries, civil society organizations, faith-based organizations, cooperating partners. All those were brought on board. The other issue after the stakeholder mapping, which was inclusive, was to look at the security sector audit. How is security provided as a nation? Who are the stakeholders in our current state in the provision of security? What laws govern the provision of security currently? Do we have gaps in the way that we provide security before the drafting of the NSS? Do we have overlaps? And also that informs how you go about the 
situational analysis, the threats, the risks, the challenges to national security. So those issues are part of what informs the first P that uh, Dr. Mebo discussed. I want to emphasize if that is missed, mostly the end product will be contentious, the implementation might be compromised. Process informs product that we should put at the back of our minds. Having done the stakeholder mapping, the security sector audit, the key issues now would be how do we define security as a nation? A collective and common understanding of the definition of national security. For our country, national security has been defined as the process of ensuring holistic protection of all Zambian citizens, regardless of ethnicity, color, or creed, as well as our sovereignty and territorial integrity as exposed in the motto, One Zambia, One Nation. I'll come back to that motto. Including our economic well being, culture, and shared values. The Zambia, One Zambia, One Nation motto is a motto that was coined by our founding fathers. We've got uh, about 73 dialects in the country. We need to have that unity in diversity and unity in, of purpose for us to remain a unitary state and also face the challenges, risks, and threats that we face as a nation collectively without letting those divide us or indeed sending us into conflict. And I must say that that is one of the reasons for which Zambia has remained a peaceful state from independence until now. I will also talk about uh, the consultation that characterized the development of our national security strategy. From the start of this process, it was unparalleled cooperation and collaborative efforts. Concerted efforts with unity of purpose. What is the product that we want to achieve? So that drove us to ensure that the process was inclusive, drawing on the wisdom and expertise of all relevant stakeholders. At every level, we had engagements. Zambia has uh, 10 provinces. We had engagements in all the 10 provinces of Zambia to get their inputs, which informed the final document that was approved by cabinet as Zambia's national security strategy. Dr. Joe talked about uh, challenges in terms of people perceiving things differently. Those challenges will always arise. The key issue is consultations must be encouraged until consensus is reached. When something is people-driven, consensus is achieved, the stakeholders have been consulted widely, 
you remove the issues of contention and you have a drive towards what matters for the nation, what matters for the people. And that way, there's broad ownership and implementation is likely to be more successful. Having gone through the consultative process and the collecting information needed for this after defining what our national security strategy was, what our vision for national security strategy is, the rationale for the national security strategy, the national interests, guiding principles, all these well considered, then informed that our situational awareness for the national security strategy and the situational analysis is what the people identify to be threats, challenges, or risks to national security. Again, an emphasis on some point that has already been uh, highlighted by Dr. Mebo. We do not just focus on the traditional threats. We look at the national non-traditional threats, the human security aspects, economic issues, health, energy, community security, personal security, political security, all those pillars, the seven pillars of human security are considered intensively in the social analysis so that when it comes to the interventions, they will be able to speak to the challenges that you have and how best as a nation, collectively, you rise above those challenges, above those risks, to ensure that you provide national security as a public good to the nation. It's important that we understand what the rationale for the national security strategy is and the, what it intends to achieve. Other issues that have already been highlighted by Dr. Joel when he talked about the conceptual framework, the importance and the challenges. For me and the team, we saw the national security strategy as a consensus building strategy at the domestic level because it brought in all the stakeholders. They gave their views, they gave their inputs. And once they know that their voices have been heard, their concerns have been addressed, then that ownership comes in. From domestic consensus, we also look at government being able to address all threats holistically. Again, Dr. Joel mentioned that this is the overarching strategy. The basic explanation that I can use, which may appeal to a lot of us is if you have a house or an apartment, there'll be various rooms and these rooms will be, let's say, traditional security. There will be non-traditional security, which will have human security under that, the seven pillars that I mentioned earlier. But above these rooms, there should be a roof. And that roof, in this case, I want to refer to it as the national security strategy that should be overarching, that should give 
specific sector specific guidelines to all the players and stakeholders in the provision of national security as a public good. That way you ensure that there's policy consistency, coordination and collaboration and prioritization of security concerns. This will also ensure that resources are utilized in the most prudent and efficient manner. Then we are able to achieve economy, effectiveness, and efficiency in the provision of security as a public good. The other issue is uh, enhancing the regional and international confidence. It's a confidence building tool. That ensures that our cooperating partners, our neighbors, our regional bodies, the continent and the globe understands our position. We understand the commitments that we have to those regional bodies, to the African continent itself and to the globe in as far as peace and security is concerned. Those, for me, are part of the important aspects in terms of the rationale and the guiding principles that should inform the national security strategy. But allow me also to maybe just highlight the importance of holistic security situation analysis, situational analysis. We should be able to boldly, clearly identify the risks, the challenges, the threats to national security as we have defined it as a nation. It is that clear understanding that is going to assist the national security strategy to give sector specific guidelines to all the players and ensure that all the policies that are going to be formed will be speaking to providing answers to those threats, risks, and challenges. And then they will also inform the implementation of that. If our understanding of our threats, our risks and challenges is not up to the mark, even the intervention measures that we propose may not speak to those issues and then they will not solve what we intend to achieve through the NSS. National interests, I believe every nation has the national interests. The issue is, do all citizens of the country understand what those national interests are? Are the stakeholders clear about those national interests? It is important that these issues are debated widely, they are understood widely, and consensus is arrived at. Uh, thank you for the reminder. So let me just conclude by saying that um, we have walked this path as a nation, critical to that is the process, the people, 
should be at the center of that process. Priorities must be looked at, and then you have the product that you desire to have. The political will is also very, very important in this. In our situation, after that, government oversight is always provided through parliament. And parliament, once this is implemented, will come in to provide the oversight. I think I will end here in case there are any clarification which do not border so directly on the actual contents that have not been uh, discussed. I will be able to attend to those. Uh, thank you.